All right, so over time, I've had a lot of people ask in the uh, FreeNAS videos just what this thing with all the CD-ROM drives was. Some people have referred to it as a computer. Some people have just said, oh, what's that tower of CD-ROM drives for? I've answered that question in the comments, but because I know not everybody gets a chance to read every last comment on every last video, and that's too much to ask anyway, um, I'm going to make a video about this. But before I do, I want to stop and talk about something. This is my computer networking room. There's a lot of stuff goes on in here. A lot of stuff that's connected, a lot of stuff that's hooked up, and it all does something important. And I'm pretty confident in the ability of this room to safely handle the electrical load that it's being placed under because I did all the wiring in here and I used good quality wiring, I installed dedicated circuits for it, and I didn't overload it. So I'm a little tired of the people who come along and have nothing better to do in their lives than to make a comment that says, so when are you going to have a fire? Or did you have a fire yet? i tell you what, I love comments. Most of you people who watch my videos know I'm pretty easy going. But if there's one thing I am tired of beyond all extents of tired, it's non-constructive criticism. you got zero tolerance for it. So if somebody comes along and makes a stupid comment, I'm warning you right now, at the very least it's going to be deleted. At the very most, you're going to get banned. So don't go there. If you want to have a constructive discussion about what's going on in here, hey, send me a private message. Write me a comment on the video. I'd love to hear from you. But I don't want to hear abject stupidity, and I really don't want to hear, Hey, stupid, you had a fire yet? No. Anyway, I digress. This thing, I initially thought that this was a cabinet for use with a uh, external SCSI card, i.e. a small computer system interface, which is actually a method of hooking up things like disks and scanners, um, you can even hook computers to other computers with it. There are even SCSI printers made. And that's what I thought this thing was when I saw it at a ham fest a couple of years ago. And I was like, well, really don't need anything like that. I'd never use it for that. But I could certainly use the CD-ROM drives. Well, when I was hauling it back to my truck after paying a princely $5 for it, I began to realize that there was more here than met the eye for a couple of reasons. First of all, this status panel up here which reads status, SCSI, network, and power. Also the separate power button and the fact that there were no SCSI connectors on the back. Only an RJ45 connector. So I began to realize that there was something more than met the eye going on here and I knew almost immediately what it had to be. It had to be a networked CD-ROM server. And that's exactly what it is. This up here is a controller made by Axis Communications probably contains a computer, some firmware, and some memory. And then it has a SCSI controller in the back of it that talks to each of these CD-ROM drives, which are set to SCSI IDs 0 to 7. Anyway, I'm sorry, 0 to 6. This thing up here takes 7 for itself. There's a baby AT power supply in the back of it, rated for about 250 watts worth of output power. This thing that's down here is just a dummy panel. It doesn't do anything. It looks like there should be a speaker back there, but there's not. It just lets air go through it. The only thing I've had to battle with this thing is the stupid cheap power supply fan wants to keep going bad, and I haven't devised a permanent fix short of replacing with another fan, which I really, you know, after the first two or three times, I really haven't felt like pulling this thing apart again and fixing it. But there's enough airflow through here, through the other fans, that the power supply wouldn't even need a fan. But because I don't want to have a fire, I'm not going to leave it running unattended. Also, one of the CD-ROM drives that it came with was bad. So this is one. These are all 12-speed NEC drives. This one is a Panasonic 8-speed drive pulled from some old Macintosh thing that was on its way to the trash at my place of work. So it had one bad drive that wouldn't even open, wouldn't even respond, didn't even show up on the bus and I checked all the jumpers and made sure that everything I could do about it was okay before I finally took it out and replaced it with one that works. So anyway, what you do with this thing, after you've turned it on, it boots up here. All the CD-ROM drives do their thing. But what you do with this thing is you can load, you can load CDs in each drive and then this thing will make them available over your choice of Microsoft networking Apple networking, web serving, 
or file transfer protocol. I believe it also supports NFS exports for Unix and things like that, but I have never played with that and so I couldn't tell you for sure. But suffice it to say, it's a surprisingly capable piece. You can see it going through its CD-ROM drives here, looking at the contents of each one. This thing is invaluable for machines, because I have vintage computers that don't have CD-ROM drives. This thing is invaluable for that sort of thing, because I can pop a CD in here, set up a boot disk with networking drivers, or add the networking drivers from a floppy disk, and then I can connect to the CD that I want to use and install the software from there. Now if you run through all these eject buttons in rapid fire succession, it creates kind of a cool visual effect. Definitely a cheap visual effect. Got a couple of CDRs in here, no doubt containing some custom software compilations. A Windows XP upgrade disk that I've been wondering where that was for the past several months. Office, um, what is this? This is Office uh, 7. I believe that's Office 95. A Windows 95 disk. Quattro Pro from Novell. Another CDR. And another CDR. This thing does recognize audio CDs if you put them in there, so its firmware is intelligent enough to allow that but it doesn't really know what to do with them and it certainly doesn't have any facilities for playing audio over the network. So now that this thing has booted up, let's go and have a look at the software side. This thing connects to an Ethernet network using a 100 megabit link. As you can see, it's linked in here. Um, got a link, got 100 megabits. Should be full duplex, the last I knew. So let's go check out what the software looks like for this thing and how it functions from the software side.